had the Samsung about a week now and I'm slowly getting used to its quirks. Um, still loving Artflow, I think it's still the best of the packages. I've tried a few more but nothing comes close to doing, um, for me, um, what Artflow does. I mean, it's, it's probably the most flexible of all the packages so far. I love the sensitivity of the pen, um, the use of layers and um, it, I'm still working at a pretty decent uh, canvas size. Here we are blocking in the cartoon. I already have an idea of what the cartoon's about. Um, I don't actually know the detail of them at, at, at the moment. I mean, um, I know that the figure in the middle is going to be a wife. The figure on the left is going to be a crazy husband sitting in a mobile bathtub whilst playing a trumpet and wearing some kind of strange headgear. And the figure on the right, I hadn't decided who he was going to be at, the t uh, you know, at this stage of just blocking everything in. Um, I've now decided it's going to be a settee rather than a um, two chairs, which I originally drew. Um, and the process now just begins where I slowly refine the um, the initial shapes, clear up the lines, try to find the best um, image I can draw from the initial scribblings. Uh, Michelangelo, which I'm not comparing myself to Michelangelo by any stretch of the imagination, but he always used to, uh, his quote, he's attributed to have said something along the lines of, you know, the statue's always there inside the rock, it's just a matter of removing the uh, bits of rock that you don't need. He said it more pith pithily than that, but... Oh yeah, here I, here I am with a Centurion's helmet. I don't know why I decided on a Centurion's helmet, uh, and I probably re regretted it quite quickly. There, there we go, here's the joke. They say genius is indestructible from madness. Um, the joke is, of course, that sometimes madness is just madness, and there's no genius involved, um, which I think is probably the case in this instance. Um, yeah, just drawing the face and trying to find an expression that works. Um, like I said in the previous video, I, I really wish I could draw cartoons like Tony Husband or, um, you know, some of those cartoonists in um, the New Yorker who have got a very minimalist style. Um, I'm trying to, th trying to think what the name is. Uh, Alex Gregory, probably. Um, is one I really like, who's just very clean lines, lots of black, lots of filled in black. Um, kind of reminds me of Nicholas Bentley, who was an English illustrator, cartoonist. He um, he worked on a book with um, Humphrey Barclay, I think it was. Um, the Life and Times of Rochester Sneath, I think. It was a book of spoof letters. When I, I wrote a book of spoof letters, um, called Second Class Mail, and one of the influences um, was the Rochester Sneath book, um, along with the Henry Root book, of course. Um, but the illustra his illustrations are very, very clean and dense black, you know, uh, it's, it's just black suits with, you know, clean, very, very clean lines. Um, I can't draw anything like that. Or like Alex Gregory in the New Yorker, or you know, there's a, there's a few more. Um, I think Bruce Eric Claplin also does it in the New Yorker. He writes under the name Beck B E K. Um, his are very simple. They look simple drawings. I mean, they're just wonderfully executed. But um, nothing like I'm doing here, which is just that when you look at it quite close up, it just looks an absolute mess. Um, yeah, I. I I wouldn't know how they even work, whether they even go through this kind of process of... You um, must be an amazingly accomplished illustrator to sort of get, you know, capture the profile, capture a, capture a body the first time. Or you just have to be confident that, 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 the, that the style of the cartoon carries it. Um, I, I, I can't do that. I'm, I'm constantly scribbling. I usually, you know, when I'm working in ink, I'll be doing all this in pencil and it'll take me an age to get it right and then slowly I'll have to go over it all in ink um, which makes me feel terrible every time I do it because um, I've heard Ralph Steadman say a few times that you know you should always not just go straight to ink throw it around on the canvas explore and find 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 the image that, that's living there um, I suppose I do it in a way you know, I, I am searching for an image here um, at this stage, you know, I, I don't know the relationships between 
the two the two people sitting here. Um, it's an exploration of a, of a sort, I suppose, but I, I, I do have a a rough idea what the cartoon's going to look like at the end. Um, I mean, of course, it never looks as good as it looks in my mind, but um, that's still my learning process. Uh, yeah, sofas. I hate drawing sofas. Yeah, it always seems I involve drawing sofas. I never get the two ends to look right. Um, yeah, but going back to the um, what I was talking about, which was the um, that kind of illustrator who who has very clean lines, and very little shade, in, and just uses black and white. You know, the, the Nicholas Bentley, Alex Gregory. Um, I can I do look at a lot of cartoonists from. Um, the New York. I've got the collected New York and the collected Punch, and um, seeing cartoons change over the a century is really, um, really helpful because you have a. I suppose we've moved away from a. a, a, a yeah, I would say an illustrator, a style of illustration which is quite um, mannered and formal. Though that's the stuff I really, really enjoy. You know, the, obviously Robert Crumb, who is. You know, I just, when I started to learn how to draw, I figured out, you know, who should I study, and Robert Crumb was the obvious one. I, th I think you can, you know, see the really obvious stealing of a technique from <laughs> Crumb in my drawings. Um, nowhere. I haven't even... Um, I'm just wondering what I'm doing here. Uh, I'm just... Yeah, I think that... the the problem with this illustration, this this cartoon, was there was a hell of a lot of taking stuff away rather than um, there was a period where yeah, here, I changed my I changed my mind halfway through and I thought well I, this I, the centurion helmet wasn't looking right so let's try try something different so I'm here trying to cap capture the shape of a balloon hat and then I gave up and just drew a woolly hat but um, I th I think for a long time I'll, I'll stay with the woolly hat but um, eventually I think I even changed that. Yeah, um, yeah. So I, I like illustrator more illustratively, if there's such a word, um, cartoonists. Um, the problem is, I, I, the stuff I really enjoy looking at tends to be um, cartoonists. You know, strip cartoonists. You know, the, the Robert Crumbs of the world. Um, but I do enjoy drawing gag cartoons. Um, Gag cartoons are a little bit harder than doing a strip cartoon because you've got to get the. It's it's like a metaphysical conceit, um, you know. The metaphysical poets would write really really small but quite dense poems, which in which they try to ca encapsulate the entire world in a, a very very potent image. And I think that's a little bit like being a, a gag cartoonist. You have to capture the world in a, a minimal number of words, ideally none. Um, yeah, I'm, here I'm trying to figure out the knee, the legs. The legs weren't looking right, and I was wondering whether it did look funnier with one leg out of the bath. I don't think it does, so I think I, I moved back to both of them. But yeah, it did take me quite a few efforts to get the knees quite right. Um, yeah, so I think my style is probably borrowed from strip cartoonists, obviously crumb, but applied to gag cartoons, which are the things I really enjoyed you know working out the most um that knee looks horrible um and that's the problem i'm having at the moment i'm still not sure whether my uh, the style i'm i'm developing is actually suitable to, to gag cartoons um i hope they are because i think when you look back at punch say from the 1930s some of the cartoons are there are very i mean they're very much like the stuff crumb was producing um Crumb was, I think, influenced by Thomas Nast, uh, who had, um, in fact, you know, if you look at some of the, see some of Nast's illustrations, you can definitely see uh, elements of Crumb there. Um, and I think, you know, Nast and a lot of those cartoonists, you know, gag cartoonists, caricaturists of the early century, um, they very, 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 um, much about you know cross hatching um illustration um some of the you know some of the some of the punch cartoons from nineteen thirty I think pont is a really good one 
Um, Arthur Arthur Wallace Mills, I think, is another um, really good cartoonist. Um, some of the jokes of age. There's a cartoonist called uh, called Arthur Watts, I think. Arthur Watts. Um, his illustrations are brilliant, even though the jokes are not particularly good. I, it's not that they, you know, they, I think they've just aged. Ah, here we go. I've I've, I've established the relationship between the um, the people now. So it's the wife, the husband in the bath, and she's talking to the the local vicar, who's over a cup of tea. Yeah, little duck in his bath. <coughs> um, yeah, Arthur Watts, um, punch cartoonist, brilliant illustrations. But um, unfortunately, that style seems to have passed out of um, fashion. The sort of genteel. Um, mannered cartoons um, I suppose that in a way I suppose this is pretty much what this is you know the danger I, th I find drawing cartoons is my mind seems to work in I tend to find myself drawing a cartoon world rather than the real world um, I don't know anybody who has um, cups of tea with a local vicar um, I suppose it's a kind of BBC One mentality, you know, the sitcom mentality, which I I don't really um, like or understand where it comes from but I seem to be, I seem to find myself drawing cartoons in that tradition and I don't know why um, perhaps it's just easy comedy perhaps it's just recognisable comedy perhaps it's just the comedy of trying to impress somebody who comes to your house while somebody's embarrassing you in the background um it's, it's yeah. It's, this is something that's actually worried me a little bit recently. Not not necessarily worried, but bothered me the fact that I don't know if my cartoons have got enough of a contemporary feel. Um, is is this character in the middle the wife? Is she too much of the um, stereotypical Les Dawson battle axe, rather than being somebody who I actually see um, every day? Is she too much of the nineteen sixties, nineteen seventies? You know, does d the same the same the same with the priest? Um, he reminds me. Actually, I know I drew him based on the only priest I ever knew, who, growing up as a child, who was a very goofy-looking character with large teeth. Um, so I don't know how much of this is actually coming from the real world. How much is this coming from having just looked and studied a lot of cartoons over the years? Um, it does bother me a little bit. Anyway, here I am. I'm still, still working things out. Still working things through. Working out the saucer. The hand doesn't look right. That line I'll have to go there. But, um, like I say, I've, I know I've sped this up a thousand times. I probably should have sped it up two thousand times. It's still going to take a long time to get through. Um, but I am slowly getting to the shape of the cow too. And the, the, the majority of the jokes there, except for the, I think the hat needs to be changed. Um, and I'll now just like slowly start to work through um, clearing up a few of the lines and adding a little bit of detail I think probably using the, um, the Samsung I'm going to have to as much as much as I am enjoying the results of, of what I'm doing I do think it's taking too long to to work this way um, my workflow is has slowed down dramatically um, whatever time I'm, I'm gaining by having the Samsung with me at all times so if I'm sitting outside in a coffee shop I can draw um, some of this probably was actually drawn in a coffee shop um, I, you know sitting in front of the TV at night uh, lying in bed you know wherever I am if I want to do some drawing I, I can draw and that does make it more uh, productive however um, I'm not sure this this technique is the uh, is the best technique that said I really do like Artflow Artflow is a, it's a fantastic little program um, few things missing from it I really wish I could save brushes um, switch between them a little bit easier there is supposed to be um, a switch on the there, there is a switch on the S Pen, but you're supposed to be able to enable it to switch between the pen and the eraser, which would save me a lot of time. Unfortunately, it doesn't work on my Samsung. I don't know why. I don't know if it if it does actually work at all. But um, yeah, 
again <laughs> again I'll be just what every bathtub needs um yeah outflow yeah some of the features I'd like in outflow um yeah the ability to save brushes the switch between brushes might be um might be better and like I've said I think before I think I love the ability to add text um or even one of the most frustrating things I find is um the the inability to actually select areas on the canvas and then move them scale them um I suppose it's asking a bit much I mean it's a fantastic program but you do miss those little um yeah I'm trying, I was thinking probably the 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 vicar might have a little bit of uh, tissue paper on his face where he's cut himself shaving but it didn't work um, I think the face is actually it's actually one of the better faces I've drawn I actually like this this face there's something about him which is um Uh, honest but um, naive, I don't know. Uh, here we go. Yeah, this is all on a separate layer because I do so much cross hatching. Um, like I've said in the previous video, I do way too much cross hatching, um, but I just love the look of it. Um, I love Crumb. I think his work's just, um, you know, I can just study it for hours with a micro uh, magnifying glass and. You never figure out how he's done the the cross hatching. This there's a the effect of cross hatching seems to be sort of magnified by, you know, when you're doing it, you you and you're looking at it quite close. You think, you know, this this just looks rough and it doesn't work, or and then you look at it again from a distance and it just seems to. I don't know. Something happens and it, and it's um it's magical. When it's done properly, of course, not not the way I'm doing it here. But uh, with Crumb, you know, he seems to manage to capture textures just through ca cross hatching. So when you look closely at it, it's just a bunch of lines. Then you sort of step back a little bit, and it's um, you know, it's it's veins on the back of a hand or um, the texture of a pair of jeans. Yeah, the cross hatching will it does take me a long time on this. Um, again, I could, I, I could and probably should speed it up, but um, then it'll just fly in so quickly that I don't think anybody would um, be able to follow what's going on. Some of the best cross hatches are actually um, people like Scarf and Stedman. Um, Scarf is an astonishing. His, his cross hatching in his early works just unbelievable but um i've never ever f been able to figure out how he does it whether he uses a ruler or a um i'm saving it yeah scarf his cross hatching is amazing um I never understood whether he figured out whether he uses a ruler, whether he uses one of those bendable rulers, um, or whether it's just because it's the scale he works at, because he does draw on enormous canvases or pieces of paper. Um, but his cross hatching is, is dense and geometric and just unbelievable. He doesn't do it as much, I've noticed. I mean, he, like a lot of illustrators and cartoonists, they seem to have moved to um, paint and colour. Um, scarf especially he, he just seemed to abandon ink at one point and now all the stuff he does is um, looks like it's ink and then paint but very little cross hatching but the cross hatching is the thing that first attracted me to his work and, st and the stuff I, I really of his work I really love such as his, his illustrations of Nixon with a huge huge nose and just densely cross hatched it's just amazing um whether he just, you know, grew tired of it, didn't have the time to do it, I don't know. But um, it's a shame. A lot of illustrators have, have, have stopped doing that. Martin Rousen's brilliant. Um, I've bought his uh, Gloves Travels recently and his uh, Tristram Shandy books. And both are full of great illustrations where it's cross-hatched. But on the um, Gulliver's Travels, um, half of the book seems to be painted... Um, whether it's a speed thing, he does it 
for some thematic reason I don't know but the, the two halves of the book just I love I love the crosshatch side the ink the ink work but painting I I I've, I've perhaps because I, 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 I perhaps just because I can't do it myself I, I I'm not interested in it or I don't think it looks as good I, I don't know um, I just feel like something's something's missing when um, I think it's because newspapers probably started to print cartoons in colour um, the, the Times have got some brilliant cartoonists but they all work in colour now um, Peter Brooks um, some of his work in, in inks amazing to look at you can see most of it on the um, there's a cartoon archive uh, I forget the, the exact name of it but there's a there's a national cartoon archive where it's got all the um, past work of cartoonists, newspaper cartoonists and um, look at some of the old Peter Brooks stuff and as, as great as he is now working in uh, watercolour um, it's great to see his black and white stuff uh, I just love black and white cartoons I probably shooting myself in the foot by not adding more colour but I don't know to me black and white is the purest form of cartoon and it's the kind I take pleasure from um, yeah I think getting closer to the end most of the cross action seems to have been done I had a little bit of a second guess myself doing the eyes and I did, redid them and then redid them again um, yeah black and white cartoons I just p personally prefer black and white cartoons I, I don't find my interest is held by um, cartoons in colour um, I was brought up you know with as a child you know Bill Tidy was always on the television drawing cartoons and He'd just stand in front of a large white sheet of paper and uh, with a big black um, permanent marker in his hand, and he'd scribble a black and white cartoon, and that's the stuff um, I was brought up with. And then when I discovered Crumb, um, Crumb's work's all in black and white. I mean, uh, I think some of it's been coloured since for prints, but it never ever looks as good um, as his black and white work. Yeah, more cross action. Oh yeah, a little bit of background. I'm not. I don't tend to really do do much background. I think that's that would just suck me into a whole different realm of um, overdrawing. I mean, I could create the whole uh, living room in precise detail, but I don't see the point of it. Um, I think I'm, I'm. I've got enough troubles, you know, trying to. Uh, trying to avoid uh, overdrawing the, the foreground without getting to overdrawing the, the background as well yeah I've signed it I thought I'd finished it and then I had second thoughts looking at it I thought first of all I realised that if he was swinging in through the living room door on wheels the chances of the water being flat in the bathtub are, um, it, it, it wasn't realistic Plus it adds a little bit of something just to see the water splashing out. It adds to the sense of um, movement. Here the, the colour palette keeps popping up because what I'm doing is I'm just using some white ink just to uh, cover over the background on a separate layer. It just saves me having to delete them because by this stage I'm pretty certain I know what, what I want here and uh, there's no need to start going through that other layer deleting in between all these little splashes. Um, yeah, just going around the post. Almost at the end now. Yeah, more cross hatching. I do like it with making my cross hatching. You just have to break it up a little bit. The um, don't make it too clean. And then finally, I get rid of the woolly hat, which it annoyed me all the way through. And I've gone back to my original concept, but this time I did actually look on the internet and look to see uh, what a centur Roman centurion's helmet why is he wearing a Roman centurion's I have no idea there you go that's finished hope you enjoyed listening to me ramble about cartoons <laughs>